Hi, and thank you for watching. On today's video, we're gonna have the Pioneer AVH 2440 NES. Stay tuned. So it's that time of the year again. Pioneers come out with new radios. The 2440 is the replacement for the 2330. There are subtle differences between the two that we'll hit on through this, but for the most part, it is a very similar radio. Almost exactly similar. Now, if you're wondering what the difference between a 2440 and a 2400 is, well, let's open the box and I'll show you the first major difference. And that would be this guy here, the remote control. The 2440s have remote control, the 2400s do not. The other thing that the 2440 is gonna have, or any radio that has that 40 in it, is gonna have HD radio. That's a feature those other radios aren't gonna have. You have your Bluetooth mic. You have your five foot USB extension. You have a power plug that is the same power plug that they've been using for about three or four years now. So if you wanna upgrade to this, go right ahead. And a bag of screws. You have the quick start guides. If you want the full owner's manual, make sure you go to their website at pioneerelectronics.com and download it. They don't give it to you anymore. Now we're gonna go ahead and finish unboxing this. We're gonna start showing you the back of the radio. So taking a look at the back of the radio, we'll start right here with the USB. This is a five volt, one and a half amp output. This is the only USB that this radio has. Next to that is going to be your aux jack input. Now this is a full aux jack AV input. So you can do video in this as well as just straight up sound. This is also gonna be where you're gonna plug in the auto EQ microphone. So if that's a feature you're gonna to wanna to use, make sure you run some form of extension off of this. Next to that is gonna be your main power plug input. Above it, you're gonna have your iData link input. Above that, this little guy right here is going to be for your Bluetooth microphone. Next to that is your steering wheel control input. If you'll notice, they're the exact same size as the aux, so make sure you get that right. Then this guy here is your Sirius XM input. This is for the add-on SVX 300 tuner. On the other side, we have everything that is audio related. They've gone ahead and separated the two for optimum sound quality. This is your six channel, four volt preamp output. Starting at the bottom, we have the subwoofer, we have the rear, and we have the front. Next to it here, we have some AV inputs and an AV output. So this is going to be your video input. This is also going to be used for the optional front-facing camera. This is another feature that the 40 series has that the non-40s don't. The ability to turn your AV input into the front camera input. Now this is a lone video output. It does not have an audio output so you can screen mirror the DVD or CD or USB out to a monitor in the back. The brown one up here in the corner is going to be for your backup camera and then this guy down here is for your HD tuner. FM plug-in. Now the HD FM tuner is the exact same antenna as the one that's already on your car. Now we're gonna go ahead, turn this thing around, power it up, talk about the rest of the features. Alright, so this radio has a 7-inch WVGA LED backlit clear resistive touchscreen that is 800 by 480. It has five languages that it's capable of doing. English, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Chinese. Pick one, hit the arrow button. Now, network mode, standard mode. Most of you guys out there are gonna want standard mode. Standard mode means that it's the radio is gonna be hooked up so that you have a front, rear, and possibly a sub output. That's it. Network mode means that you're only gonna hook up a set of front tweeters, a set of front mids, and a subwoofer. That's it, no rear fill at all. If you're doing anything that is going to have a rear speaker output, you need this guy. That's why it's default. We'll talk more about that later when we get to the EQ and crossover section. But for right now, we'll go ahead and select OK. You're going to get this warning. Don't worry. In six seconds, it disappears. Just like that. Now this radio has 50 watts by four of internal power. It's got a couple hard buttons here on the bottom. Let's go ahead and talk about those real quick. First up is volume up and down. It's just that. Touch it, volume goes up, volume goes down. Next to that, you have like picture in a picture, so to speak. This allows you to switch between the main unit here, and if you have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto running in the background, simply tap this button to toggle between the two. If you press and hold it, it'll automatically bring up the backup camera if you have that connected. Main menu button. This is the main menu that we're we're looking at right now. If we go ahead and go to a source, hit the main menu button, it'll take us back here. Hit it again, it'll take us back to the source. If we want to turn the unit off, just press and hold the menu button. 
and the unit will power down. Tap it again, and the unit will power back on. Delay source menu bar, this here. This brings up this here. This is for when you're in app radio mode, you might need to change tracks, go up or down, get into the system settings. This would be how you do it. You can also use it as a mute control. So if you press and hold it, it'll go ahead and mute your stereo. Next to that is the back arrow. The back arrow is that. If you're in somewhere and you don't know what button you press, simply select the back arrow and it'll take you back one function of what you've done. If you press and hold it, also shut off the display. Now it's just doing that, it's shutting off the display, nothing else. So all your features are still working in the background, it's just a black screen. This is nice for nighttime driving to prevent eye fatigue. Next to that is going to be your microphone for push to talk. Now depending on whether you're using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, it may already be on the screen, but if you don't feel like touching your screen, you can always touch this guy right here. And then last but not least is eject. This will allow you to tilt the screen if you have some form of a glare. And of course, if you tap it, this will get you to the CD DVD player located behind the screen. Hit it again or load a CD in, it'll automatically close. So one of the most important things you do when you put a radio in the dash is what? Try to match the colors from the dash. That's right. So let's take a look at how to do it. To do that, you're gonna go ahead and select the gears and then come down here to this guy right here. This is the art palette. Select backgrounds. Now there's several backgrounds to choose from, five here, as well as you scroll over, you have three moving backgrounds, and then this guy right here in the center, this is allowing you to import your own background. Now these are moving backgrounds here, as you can see. You can't import one that'll do that, but any static image, it'll allow you to do. We don't want to do that. We'd like some form of a background, so we'll go ahead and tap that. Now we can also have a different background for the home screen. So we'll go ahead and select silver for that. Then we'll select themes. This is what's gonna give us colors on the background. So for example, we want red, we want the greenish blue, orange, green, gray. Let's go for red. And we'll go back to AV, that'll be red too. And then we'll pick illumination. Illumination is for the buttons across the bottom. So you have a car that has a red dash and blue lights, you could leave it just like this. You can go in and pick any color you want. So if it has yellow lights, you could do that. You can have it scroll and just change colors throughout the day. But once you pick what you want, go ahead and select X and you'll see the screen look like that now. Now the other thing that you're gonna wanna set up, of course, is the clock, this guy here. Tap on the clock. You could set month, date, year, hour, now, hour is going to be set in 24 hour segments. So, for example, 1709. If you select 12 or 24 for display, you'll notice it displays the way you want it to. Whether you're in the normal display mode or you go to the home menu, you can tap the clock and it'll take you to the setting. Let's go ahead and select gears, select tools, and we'll scroll up here to demo mode. Sometimes you get your radio installed and it'll automatically launch the demo mode. This is where it's at in order to shut that off. You're definitely gonna wanna do that because no one wants the demo mode scrolling in the background. If you're not a big fan of beep, you know, every time you press a button you hear a beep, you can turn the beep on and off. Now, why do you upgrade your radio in the first place? To play sources, of course. Of course, and this has a bunch of sources. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, really cool Bluetooth, Let's not talk about them, let's show you how they work. To get to your sources, there's actually two ways to do that. Tap this box here, it'll bring you to drop down menu. In the drop down menu, you have all the sources that are active. If you notice, it doesn't say CD, DVD anywhere. Because there's no CD, DVD in it, therefore it's not an active source. If you hit the home icon on the bottom, you'll notice there's some sources here across the bottom. If you tap AV, this will go ahead and pull up all your sources. You'll notice some of them are grayed out, like CD, USB, Sirius XM. And the reason why they are is because they're not connected. And then you see these two over here that say car source, car feature. The reason why these are grayed out is because there wasn't an iDatalink Maestro installed. Not all cars are capable of using that harness, so not all of them are going to be able to use this. Let's start here with HD radio. Go ahead and tap it. HD radio works real similar to a normal FM radio with this guy right here that says analog. When this says digital, over here you'll see something that says HD1. Tap this white icon right here and that'll take you to the next channel where it's gonna say HD2. HD2 is gonna be a totally separate channel located on this FM station. You can make it a preset. You can go to it. When you go to it, it's gonna say linking. That's the time it takes to go from analog to digital. Next up is Bluetooth audio. Now don't get confused by thinking Bluetooth audio has anything to do with Bluetooth calling or phone. They're two totally different Bluetooths. But 
They both have a really cool feature called dual phone pairing. Let's take a look. Tap the Bluetooth audio icon. It's going to take us here to Bluetooth audio. Nothing too special about this. Tap the three lines over here. It's going to go ahead and pull up your playlists. It's going to allow you to play whatever it is you'd like. It's this guy right here, this little phone icon. Go ahead and tap that. It's going to bring up two phones that are paired to the radio. Right now, Mr. White is paired to it, but we'll go ahead and select Nando. Now it's going to go ahead and shut off Mr. White's connection and relaunch using Nando's connection. Now we have his music playing. We can come over and tap the three lines again, and we can search his music. If we tap the phone icon, you'll notice Nando is paired here. Go ahead and exit out of this, go back, switch to Mr. White. Go back to phone, and you'll see Nando is still paired. And the reason for that is because they really have nothing to do with one another. But the cool thing is, is if Mr. White gets a phone call. We can go ahead and select answer. We can talk to him, do whatever we want, hit end. Now when we go back, Nando's phone is still connected. The reason for this is all Nando's phone is doing is giving us access to his phone library and his call history. Other than that, it'll make and receive phone calls from either phone one at a time, meaning you, you obviously can't get a phone call on his phone and the other phone at the same time. Now if you'd like to switch libraries, simply tap the name, tap who you want, and it'll go ahead and switch libraries over to that phone. Tap it again, it'll switch back. The whole time, it'll play the music off of whatever phone is attached here. Now you have Pandora and Spotify control for the apps on your phone. You can control them over Bluetooth as well as over USB. And speaking of USB, let's talk about the USB here, shall we? Now this USB is pretty cool. It allows you to do a lot of different things. For one, it'll do NTFS hard drive as well as FAT32 thumb drives. It'll also allow it to read 1080 video without having to downres it before. It'll automatically downres it inside of the radio to fit the 800 by 480 screen. It'll read FLAC files. It'll read most files on the market, such as MP3s, WMAs, and AACs. But what it also does is allows you to do both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The reason why is it's a seven inch screen, so we can do that. Let's take a look first at Apple CarPlay. Now for whatever service you have, go ahead and plug in the USB to your phone via its connector. Now when you do CarPlay, it's automatically gonna go ahead and shut off Bluetooth audio. When you do Android Auto, you have to pair the Bluetooth device to the radio and also plug it in. The Bluetooth is gonna be for helping move data into the radio. Now once you've gone ahead and launched Apple CarPlay, you have all the cool Apple CarPlay features, such as your phone, music, maps, messages. Now playing, back to the Pioneer Radio, podcasts, audiobooks. You can also control things like iHeartRadio, WhatsApp, Pandora, Spotify, they're all in here for you to have access to. So you don't actually have to use those apps in the radio, you can use them here. So go ahead and give you the ability to go places, select destination, it's gonna pull up places you've been, as well as presets, such as gas station, parking garage, places to eat, coffee shops, and shopping. You can also hit this guy right here, where would you like to go? Walmart. One possibility is Walmart Neighborhood Market on Gulf to Bay Boulevard. Let me know if I should call one of them or get directions for you. As far as these icons go, you don't actually have to dig into them to use them. All you have to do is hit the voice prompt and ask it to do something. So for example, text Fernando. What do you want to say? How's it going? Your message to Fernando Lopez says, how's it going? Ready to send it? Send it. I'll send your message. Now I could have asked it to call him. I could also ask it to play music. So for example, play ACDC. Sure, here's some ACDC. If I switch to the now playing, there we go. Now if you get a text message, since I just texted Fernando, he texted me back, there's this gray bar here that appears at the top of the screen. If I touch it, Fernando said, everything is fine. Want to reply? No, thank you. Okay. If you're driving and you miss the gray bar, no big deal. Just launch her again and say, read me back my last text message and she'll do it for you. So you can see this is a very helpful thing to have while you're driving. But this is for an Apple. Let's go ahead and take a look at what it does 
for an Android phone using Android Auto. Now this is Android Auto and like Apple CarPlay it has a lot of similar features but the first thing it's going to do is give you a how to. You can either select skip or show me how. Here it's going to go ahead and talk to you about the things that you have access to. Your music. This will allow you very similar things like we just talked about. Next. If your car has steering wheel controls, your push to talk feature may be located on your steering wheel control. If not, of course, there's going to be one located here, the microphone. Or you also have this guy right here, which is just like the button from CarPlay. If you press and hold it, she's going to come on and ask you the same thing. What can I do for you? You can repeat the things like take me to Walmart, text so-and-so, call so-and-so. Now we'll go ahead and select the headphones and it'll take us to Pandora. If you notice there's a small arrow here, you tap that arrow, it's going to go ahead and open the music choices you have available to you. So from this device we have Pandora, Google Play, and Google Play Books downloaded to our device. If we select the little turn icon here, You'll notice there's an arrow on that as well. The reason why there's an arrow is because you have your choice between Google Maps or Waze. They're both Google owned, so you can use either one on your Android device. If you tap the phone icon, it's gonna go ahead and take you to your phone. Three lines here in the corner. Voice dial, dial number, contact, call history, they're all right here. You of course can just press this and say call so and so, and it'll do it for you. The big circle in the middle is gonna take you to your home. This is where a lot of things are going to be displayed, such as your temperature, the music you're listening to on Pandora, you can thumb up, thumb down from here. If you have a map going on, there'd be a little icon of a map. Tap the speedometer here in the corner, that's just going to return you to Pioneer's system. Now continuing on, on our source journey, we have iPod. It's just that. If you have an old iPod and you'd like to use the USB to control your iPod and or your iPhone, you could do that here. Your Sirius XM would be here, so if you do add that SVX 300 add-on tuner, that'll populate. The aux is located on the back of the radio. So running an aux into this, if you plan on doing the auto EQ, is kind of nice. Otherwise, you will have to pull the radio out of the dash to plug in for it. AV input, it's grayed out because depending on what you want to do, you may or may not need it. So if you're going to use this as a front-facing camera, it's going to stay grayed out. If you're going to use it to do some form of video input, you're going to turn it on. Now keep in mind the aux input is a full AV input, so you don't have you can use either one to get video into the unit. We've already covered car source. Camera view. As you notice, it's grayed out because it's not turned on. To activate your camera, there's a couple things you need to do. For one, you need to make sure your purple white wire in the main harness is connected to your reverse trigger. Then close this, go into gears, go to tools, go to camera settings. Backup camera input, go ahead and select on. Now here is where one of the differences between a 2440 and a 2330 are. If you've ever seen a 2330, there would be normally backup line adjustments right here. The 2440 no longer has that. Go back, select your input output, go to AV input and select camera. This is where turning on for your front camera is gonna be located. Go ahead and select back. Select X. Now you'll notice that the camera icon is lit up. Go ahead and tap it. Over here in the bottom corner it says one and two. Every time you tap that, it's going to go ahead and switch between your front and rear view camera. There's a little timer here in the corner. If you tap that, what that's going to do is it's going to take you back to whatever you were doing and give you 10 seconds after the last time you pushed the button and then it's going to revert back to the camera. This is so that you can have either the front camera or the rear camera on all the time but still have access to your radio. When you're done, select X and it'll permanently make it stop. Now the last two things we have in here are source off, power off. They're different and let me show you why. Source off is just going to do that. It's just going to shut the source off. What it's going to keep on is either your Android Auto, Apple CarPlay or your Bluetooth. So you'll still be able to make and receive calls, you just won't have any actual music or anything like that playing. If you want to shut the display off, no problem, press and hold the back arrow. Now to shut off the display, so you can go full dark, but still make and receive phone calls. Tap the screen. Now power off is just that. It's going to ask you, you sure you want to do this? Yes. It's a full power off. This is like taking the key out of the ignition. The radio shuts down. It's not going to turn back on if you touch the screen. However, touch a button on the face, 
it'll wake back up. If you have this radio installed in your car and for some reason your car has a power antenna and you're gonna go through a car wash and you can't figure out how to get it to go down, just do that. Now, once you're listening to a source that you choose, mm -hmm. you wanna make it sound good, right? Of course. Right? Yes. I mean, that's at the end of the day, that's probably That's the why most, you buy it. Yes. yes, the EQ section of the radio is very important. Because more than likely, the radio took out of your dash just has bass, mid, treble control if you're lucky. Well, this has a whole lot more. Let's take a look at it. So we're on Android Auto. Let's go ahead and select the icon here. Return to Pioneer. Select the gear. Press the radiating speaker. The first thing that's going to pop up is the graphic EQ. Tap here, and you can get to the graphic EQ. Now, there's another way to get to it. If you're on the main screen listening to your source, if you'll notice over here, there's an EQ icon. You touch that, it'll pull up that same EQ. Change it, and when you go back, you'll notice the icon has changed. The icon represents the current EQ that you're listening to. So you can keep an eye on that, and if for some reason you think it's changed, you can look in the corner. Tap there, it'll take you back. Now in the main EQ, you have five presets, as well as two customs. Tap custom one, you can go in, and adjust this any way you like. That looks like the perfect curve. Go back, go back. Next up, balance and fader. It's just that, balance and fader. Bang around here. Mute level. You have a couple different things you can do with mute. You have attenuation, you have mute, which is full mute. Attenuation just lowers it down a little bit, and then you have off. Source level adjust. Source level adjust allows you to take something like, we'll go to iPod here, we'll go back to audio. You notice it's highlighted now. Notice it says FM here. What this allows you to do is adjust the source you're listening to relative to FM. So if your FM is really loud and your phone is really quiet, you can make them match or vice versa, whichever you'd like. Subwoofer. Default when these things ship is for the subwoofer to be off. So if you put one of these in your car and you're hooking up a sub amp, you're like, why do I have no bass? That would be why. Speaker level. Speaker level allows you to adjust the individual level of each speaker that is hooked up to it. So you have front, rear, and sub, left and right. It's a little bit different than fader, and the reason why it has it is because of the time correction that's in it. But this is also where your subwoofer volume control is here. Now, before we get to network mode, notice you have a front speaker, a rear speaker, and a subwoofer, because this is standard mode. We're gonna go back here real quick. Crossover, it has a front crossover, has a rear crossover, and it has a sub crossover. Now, as you saw, you can turn each one of them off independent. You don't have to have any of them on. You can use the subwoofer crossover in the amp or the subwoofer crossover in the radio, as well as the fronts and rear. Now, if you choose to use it, you have a 6, 12, 18, 24 dB per octave slope. It's pretty nice. And multiple frequencies to choose from just by simply dragging it back and forth. Subwoofer settings, just are essentially gonna take you back to the subwoofer crossover. Listening position, this has to do with time correction. So if you go ahead and click front left, it's gonna to try to bring the sound all the way to you here, the driver. Time alignment, this is where that front left comes into play. Now what it's done is it's just gone ahead and put in a bunch of generic numbers that really don't mean anything. You can, of course, take a tape measure and go from your head to the speaker and enter it here in inches. That'll help to align time correction much better. Then you can go back to speaker level control and do any fine tuning you have to do with the levels themselves. Auto EQ we talked about is done through the aux jack and the add-on microphone. It's grayed out right now because the radio has to be in standby in order for it to actually function. Now before we get to safe setting and load settings and all the other things that are coming up, this was in standard mode. Let's go back and take a look at network mode real quick. In order to do that, we have to X out of this. We have to go to Gears, Tools, scroll up to Restore Settings, All Settings, Restore. Now what we're doing is we're gonna bomb this radio back to out of the box factory specs. And you have to do that for network settings and standard settings because of the way it sets the radio up. The first thing it does is it takes your front and rear RCA outputs and changes them. The front RCA becomes tweeter and the rear RCAs become mid. It also changes the way the Bluetooth output for speakers, meaning when someone's talking to you into the car. When you're in standard mode, Bluetooth comes out of front, left, and right. Well, now those are tweeters. So they move the Bluetooth phone to 
the mid, which is now your rear RCAs. It's a very important thing. Also, what it does is it changes the output of the radio's deck power. So the front deck power becomes tweeter and the rear deck power becomes mid. Now we'll go ahead and select our language. We'll select network mode. We'll select OK. Now when we go back into the EQ in network mode, the first thing we're going to notice is we go to balance and fader, we just have left and we have right. This is a telltale sign to see if you accidentally put it in network mode. If you don't have front and rear, you just have left and right, it's in network mode. We're going to speaker levels. Now if you notice, the rear speaker icon is gone, but it's added this little tweeter icon here. So now we have independent level control for the front tweeters and the front mid. And if the subwoofer was on, which it's off because we just reset the unit, we'll go back, there's the subwoofer. Now we can come over here and select listening position, driver. And we'll go into time alignment. And there again, the rears are gone. And now we have time alignment for the front tweeters and the front mid-range as well as subwoofer. Another biggie that gets changed is crossover. Because you're doing a tweeter, you need to have a tweeter crossover. So this says hi for the tweeter crossover. Now the tweeter crossover is not capable of being shut off, meaning it will always be on. Unlike when we had front rear sub and we could turn each one of them off, this has to stay on. However, mid low pass, which is going to be the cap to stop the mid range from playing up into tweeter frequencies, you can turn on and off. Mid high pass to keep the bass from getting to it. You go ahead and turn that on and adjust that as well. This creates what's called a band pass, meaning a top for the mid-range and a bottom for the mid-range. So it doesn't play too high and it doesn't play too low. And of course, last but not least, we have our subwoofer crossover. We've taken the time to go through this setup and done all the things that we needed to where we have it sound amazing. We're gonna wanna go here to save settings. Save settings is just that. If you tap this, it will save the settings. That way if the battery ever gets disconnected or something happens, you can come in here to load settings and load the setting you just made so you don't lose it and have to go through it all over again. Bass boost. This is great for if you have music that has a real poor bass track and you want to try to get some of that feel back into the music. Bass boost. Keep in mind though, if your track has a ton of bass, it will blow speakers. Loudness. Loudness is nice if you're a low quiet listener but like impact in the music. What it's designed to do is increase the bass and treble response you have three choices, low, mid, and high. As you turn volume up, the effect will decrease, but while volume is low, it really brings some feel to the music. Automatic level control, modes one, into, or off, default being off. It's just that, it's gonna control the level of variously recorded music. So if you have tons of genres and record levels, and it's just all over the board, if you turn this on, it'll help to level those out so you won't have to keep riding the volume control. And then lastly, sound retriever. Default is mode one. It's trying to bring back that compressed media to make it sound better. Now since we're in the menu, let's go ahead and select gears. There's one other thing I want you to see. We're gonna scroll down here till we get to the bottom where it says system information. Go ahead and tap that. Tap firmware information. Firmware information, this guy right here. So firmware information is very important, and why is that? It's because they need to do updates. And they do quite a bit of them usually about three or four a year. And each one of those generally fixes something that's gone goofy on the radio. You have to keep in mind, with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, those guys are constantly updating their devices. That means this radio also has to be updated. It's gonna be done through the USB, through a thumb drive. So what you wanna do is periodically go to pioneerelectronics.com and check under your radio's model number under support tab and see if there's been an update. If you register your unit, they should send you an email letting you know when there has been an update. It's the reason to register it. Trust me, you're gonna wanna do it. All right, that's it. All right. I know, right? Yeah. That's a lot. These things do do a lot of stuff. There's a lot of buttons and bells and whistles to, to, to just get in there and feel. There's only one difference between a 2440 and a 2330, and that's the backup lines. They took those out, as I said, they're gone. Other than that, it's the same radio. They didn't change anything else. Well, in the model number. So, if you've got a 2330, it's up to you what you want to do. You know, chasing numbers, it's a fun game. You know, you want that, those lines going? Yeah, hated those. <laughs> um, all right, guys. 
That's it. I know. We're done. Fernando. All right. If you like this video, please subscribe, share, like. You know where you find us. Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. All right. This has been a fun one. Thank you for watching so much. As I like to say, you guys have a great night as always. And we'll see you later next time. Bye. Dude. That was awesome. Well, I wish my wife.